Hi, my name's Keith. In this video, I'll be showing you how to synchronize a sequential circuits Model 800 to external equipment. There are essentially three different ways you can do this. One is with an external clock, the second is through tape sync, and the third one is with a drum machine using some sort of a trigger or a gate sync. The first way to synchronize the Model 800 is with an external clock. Now, unlike most MIDI sequencers or drum machines, the Model 800 doesn't subdivide the beat into parts per quarter note or anything like that. Instead, it uses a high-speed internal clock and it measures the time between uh, key down events. Uh, in the manual, it states that the clock can vary anywhere between about 50 hertz and a few kilohertz. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using this external VCO from this uh, modular setup as a clock, and I'm going to set it at about 200 hertz, which seems to be uh, a good trade-off. So I simply took the square wave output of this uh, VCO and plugged it into the uh, clock input. The record procedure is just like using the internal clock. You enable record and then just play in your sequence. hit stop record it just goes into playback loop mode. Now if I increase the speed of the VCO it will increase the uh, speed of the Model 800 and the sequence will speed up as well. Now one of the reasons why you might actually do this is uh, say you were setting up some big ambient sound or some big soundscape and you had some other equipment or some other modular gear and it could voltage control the speed of this VCO. You could use the other gear to control the speed of the clock, the VCO, which controls the speed of the Model 800, which controls uh, an external synthesizer. The second way to synchronize a Model 800 is very similar to my first example, but instead of using an external clock like this VCO, I'll be using tape sync. In my example, uh, I'm going to be using this two-track open reel machine, but in practice you'd use a multi-track tape recorder or say a digital recorder or a digital audio workstation. It doesn't really matter as long as you can use something that can record a clock as an audio source. For my example, I'm going to just, uh, I, I strike the tape with a recording of a square wave from this VCO and I'll, I'll play it back for you. It's just a 200 hertz square wave. Almost any uh, uh, high transient signal will work. The audio from the clock source on tape goes into the clock input jack on the Model 800. And also on the back of the Model 800, there's a level control to set uh, the trigger level for the transient. So once you have a clock signal, um, the recording process is exactly the same as any other uh, way to record on the Model 800. You enable record and then play in your sequence. As soon as you hit stop record, it goes into playback loop mode. And just to show that it's uh, synchronized to the tape, I'll uh, enable the vary speed on the open reel, and it will speed up, and the Model 800 should speed up as well. There we go, the uh, tape deck sped up, and the Model 800 uh, followed suit. Now you might be wondering why bother to go through this whole procedure with the tape sync and setting the level and making sure everything is set up. Well, in addition to the multi-track uh, recording possibilities, imagine you had some other uh, external piece of equipment like a MIDI sequencer or some other synthesizer or some software and it could be synchronized to the tape either through some software plug-in or some external hardware box. Well then that other piece of equipment could be synchronized to the tape, which is synchronized to the Model 800, which is controlling an external synthesizer. The third way to synchronize the Model 800 is with an external drum machine. 
Now previously I said that the uh, typical clock out from a drum machine is incompatible with the clock on the Model 800. And that's true, but exploiting a, a hardware deficiency or a bug in the Model 800, you can actually synchronize it to uh, a gate or a trigger from a drum machine. Essentially, um, you use the Model 800 only to record the pitch CV information and you don't record any uh, timing information at all on the Model 800 and you use the drum machine to provide the timing information. It's easier if I just demonstrate how it works rather than explain it. So the first thing you do is turn the clock off on the Model 800 and then go into record mode and enter your sequence. Now, it doesn't matter about the timing of your sequence because you're not actually recording any timing information and then you hit stop. Now, here I'll deconnect, uh, uh, decouple the drum machine from the Model 800. I just disconnected the clock on the back. Now, if I uh, turn on the internal clock, you'll see that the sequence runs extremely fast. So, there we go. It's so fast it's, uh, it's in the audio range and I'll slow it down using the internal clock so we can kind of see what's going on. What it's doing is it's playing it as fast as possible because there's no timing information and one note just follows the next and there's no pause in between. So I'll reconnect the drum machine clock. So now here comes the, uh, the kind of the trick. I've programmed this pad here to create a trigger output on the drum machine and that goes into the clock in. So every time I hit the pad, it increases the sequence by one step. So I can actually play my sequence by uh, using this single pad. So the idea is I record a pattern into the drum machine using that pad and then when it plays back, the Model 800 stays in sync. So how this works is I'll, uh, first I'll reset the Model 800, and then I'll go into real-time record mode. And then I'll start my sequence, or I'll start my pattern on the drum machine. It's a, it's a four bar pattern, so I'm just gonna wait for it to start again, and then I'll enter the timing information. Then, when I play the sequence back, the Model 800 will stay in sync. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.